I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. And we want to welcome you to the New Sabbath School. And Sister Brenda, how are you doing? Amen. I'm doing good. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you. It's a good day. Yes. No more snow for you, huh? I know. No more snow. I don't think we'll be getting any more this year, but oh well. The sun is coming out. I like the sun too. <laughs> Spring is almost here. Spring is coming. Yes, it is. All right. So our, our lesson is standing for religious liberty, standing for religious liberty. And um, before we go uh, to the lesson, we want to open up in prayer. We'll open up in prayer. The Lord. Thank you. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for being a part of our lives. Heavenly Father, for any little detail, the small or the great, that you are always there for us. Continue to allow us to open our ears and we may hear you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. What is it? Standing right. for religious liberty. Okay. Yeah, so our story is called Grateful for Freedom. Grateful for Freedom. A number of years ago, religious freedom was severely restricted in some countries that today enjoy freedom. Students who worship on the seventh day Sabbath often face serious challenges in their academic journey. Sometimes they were threatened that they would be expelled from school. Many families knelt in prayer asking for God's intervention and direction. Christina's parents decided to enroll their daughter in a music school several days before the scheduled entrance exam, a public announcement went out. The principal of that school announced the decision that Seventh-day Adventist students would not be admitted to the music school. It was known for that the Adventist students were determined to keep the Sabbath day holy, according to the Bible. Christina's parents received the news with considerable disappointment, yet they did not lose heart. They prayed and entrusted the matter in God's hands. With renewed interest, they anticipated the day of the entrance exam. On a one day, one appointed day, a member of, of the examination committee was charged with specific responsibility of asking each student about the religious beliefs they held. Notwithstanding their altitude in music, the students who would not attend school on Sabbath would not be granted admission. Christina's Christina waited prayerfully outside the examination room. Right before it was her turn to enter, a teacher from the examination committee was asked to leave and assist with the urgent matter. Christina entered and took her turn. One by one, the teachers of the committee tested her musical skills. After the exam was over, Christina left the room. No one had asked her about her religious convictions. Christina's family praised God for answered prayers. Now they prayed for guidance in the next step. There remained one more challenge, taking the homeroom teacher, or talking to the homeroom teacher. The, the parents surprised, the family surprised, the teacher accepted Christina in the class and offered not to mark Christina's absence on Saturday. Her desire was to help her students succeed. Each Friday at the end of the school day, the teacher gave Christina the homework that she would need to do for Monday. Christina had a successful academic year. It was time, it was a time of great joy for many Christians 
when the religious freedom was finally granted and there was no more instruction in schools on Saturday, God answered in marvelous ways the, the prayers of his faithful children. Amen. Amen. God answers in let's say marvelous ways the prayers of his faithful children. That's the key. Mm, what was yes. that bottom line? Yep. His yes. faithful children. Absolutely. Yeah, because you can have children, but some of them probably not as faithful. Oh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and it probably take them a while to be a little bit more faithful. But yeah, this he's always he's always answering prayer and uh he 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 does like marvelous ways uh mm -hmm. for us. And we didn't even do the Bible. There are different uh different accounts that are that he saved his children because they're mm -hmm. faithful to him. Like Daniel, uh the three Hebrew boys, and uh just yeah. there's different ones. So this this story is like a, kind of like a a real life story, even though the, the Bible stories or Bible accounts are, are real as well, but they're uh -huh. like a modern day one. There you go. There you go, yep. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. So that's that was kind of interesting. They had the, they were fearing that uh, they wouldn't have the academic uh, freedom to. Mm -hmm. So, it is the right time to the person examining the girl. They had to they had to step out for an urgent matter. Yep, yeah, all of a sudden. Yep. Yeah, that's not by coincidence. Absolutely. <laughs> That's how God operates. <laughs> yeah. So he's always had different coincidences where he can uh, have us uh, succeed. Exactly. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good story. Go, yeah. Yeah. Let's go on to Sabbath. And it says in, in John, John chapter 14, verse 16. And it says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Mm -hmm. So here he says he's, he is the way. And uh, just like, the, like we were talking about before, I think it was a previous lesson. So he's like the door. So everybody that, that comes to him, they have to come through, through the door. And if you're a thief or a robber, mm -hmm. you you basically have to come through. Whoever doesn't come through the door is a thief and a robber. If they try to come on the housetop, they're a thief or a robber. Try to come on the side, uh, they're a thief and a robber. But this uh, he's the way. So he's the way to everything. And uh, he's the truth. And he has that. He's only one truth. Many people search for truth. And they have uh, different opinions, uh, but it says that he's the truth and the life. So, life. so life. He has no. Not only does he have life, but he has eternal life. So eternal. you can you can rest and trust in him. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, me, many we trust in many people, but they you know they're just like us, and they mm -hmm. they perish, but. Yeah, it's it's a good thing that we can trust in someone that has uh, that loves us, but he also has uh, life for us. Absolutely. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, absolutely, that's true. Yep. Yeah. That scripture says it all. Yep. Yeah. So it, at the bottom it says we are called to be a godly people who think, feel, and act in harmony with biblical principles in all aspects of personal and social life. So in everything, we're supposed to be in harmony with, with God's will and his purpose for us. Uh, but th this text reminds me of another, uh, another scripture, which is in uh, First Peter, I think it's 2 verse 9, mm -hmm. which says that you are a royal priesthood and you're a holy people. And and we should sing forth the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. There's that word again, marvelous. Marvelous, huh? Marvelous light. So it's not just any kind of light, but it's, it's 
it's a uh, it's out of the ordinary kind of light there that that he has for us is we uh he draws us out of darkness but he puts us into that marvelous light okay okay so, that's what he says yeah so that's this kind of uh good news exciting news for us Absolutely. all right so let's go to sunday sunday's lesson so this sunday responding Okay, so it says read Ephesians 5, 1 through 17. And so that is what, that's something that we could do during the week, even after we um, go through Bible study, something that we can um, sit down and concentrate on that, you know, read, what is it, Ephesians 5, 1 through 7. But what is it talking about? It says discrimination against people because of their religious beliefs can be minor, serious, or even life-threatening. It can happen across the world or here at home. It can happen to Christians as well as people who hold different beliefs. We need to show our gratitude to God for the freedom we enjoy and pray for those who do not enjoy these freedoms. We also need to utilize these privileges to share the hope we found in Jesus. It says when religion and freedom are restricted, what should Christians what should Christians response be? And it says read Acts. Let's see what Acts 5:29 says. It says, Peter and the other apostles replied, we must obey God rather than man, rather than human beings. So rather than man, yeah. So what was the question? The question said, when religious freedoms are restricted, what should we do? What should we be? What should the Christian's response be? And what is it? We have to respond. We have to um, trust God. We can't listen to what man, and I know it could be a serious situation at times, but we have to obey God. It says, how can we be, Chris, be Christ's witnesses when political or religious authorities restrict religion freedom? How can we hold firm to God's commission to share Jesus with everyone? Wow, that's pretty tough. Especially, you know what the thing is, we, we live here in America, and in America, yes, we are spoiled when it comes to things like that, because we could pretty much, it doesn't matter. I mean, we're not going to be persecuted, but there are countries where I'm telling you, the mere fact we even mentioned his name, Jesus. I mean, people really are dying. I saw, I don't know, I don't even think it's been a month ago. But they were talking about these twenty. It was twenty-one Muslim men. They were being, they were actually, they were going to be. Um, I know it sounds graphic, but their heads were going to be chopped off. Why? Because they became Christians. And the thing that was amazing about it, the, their friends and, and their family were saying that even as they were still being persecuted, they were still calling out to Jesus' name. How, how was that? I mean, they were still calling out for mercy and just saying how much they love him. And one of the people commented, they said that, and I thought this was like, well, how far off are we? He, he commented, he said something about um, he loved Middle Eastern Christianity, but when it comes to Westerners, it says their Christianity is like watered down bootleg. Now that's mm -hmm. just how he expressed it. Because I think because we're here in America, we don't have it as rough as others. So we kind of like, I don't want to say play when it comes to Christianity, you know, well, we know that we're not going to be killed for it, right? And so when it says right here in where it says Acts 529, we are to obey God's word, not man's word. We haven't gone to that level yet. What do you think? Meaning, look, you're gonna, oh, what's, what's the scenario? I don't know. If you don't do this, we're gonna kill you because of you know God's word. We, we haven't gotten there yet, but there's countries that do. But the word says what we're supposed to do. I mean, how are we gonna stand up to that when persecution really does come? Right, in, so, in, that, in that text too, I agree, I agree with what you're saying. And that text, um, that you just read, there were, uh -huh. you know, there was the apostles. So they were, they, they, they kind of were witnessing the same yeah. thing as far yeah, as exactly. yeah. And um, what happened to them? Yeah, so their their statement was kind of like bold, like, yeah. okay, you're gonna kill us? Okay, but yeah. we want you to let you know that um, we want to obey God rather than man. Exactly, that's some, some serious, serious, serious stuff. Yeah. So God is the only one that can can destroy the body and the soul into hell. So uh, there's a text that says, 
don't be afraid of the person that's, I'm paraphrasing, don't be afraid of the person that can destroy, uh, what's that, basically, that can harm you, mm -hmm. but you, you'd rather be uh, afraid of the person that can harm you and put your soul mm -hmm. into hell. So yeah. they can, they can only put you in uh, one, one category, basically, they can harm your flesh, but mm -hmm. as far as like, uh, casting your 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 soul your motor soul into hell they cannot do that so jesus was saying that you you that's the person you you better fear that's the person yes so exactly which is him he's he's the only one that can that can do that so the only one yep right so i just thought that it was interesting that you're talking about the the people from the foreign uh, uh yeah. and then basically the 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 jews here uh mm -hmm. Peter, they were basically going through the same thing in persecution. Thing. So, and uh, so they given us uh, basically an example to follow uh, that we can, that we don't have to fear uh, men and we have to obey God rather than man. So they're basically showing us the, the steps because it says in, in one of the scriptures that these are written for our examples. Basically all the the biblical characters, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all them, all the people basically in the Bible, they, their stories are written. They're not just written as like good stories or adventures, uh, but they are also written for our examples so we can follow that and we can know where to make the right decision and learn from their mistakes. And that's how God dealing with them, he can deal with us kind of the same way. And, uh, but yeah, I thought that was interesting just to. Oh yeah, very much so, oh yeah. Yeah, because they were witnessing for, for his name and his mm -hmm. name's sake, so. Yeah, let's see, okay. Let's go to Monday. Bible answers on Christian behavior. So let's read some of these scriptures. Let's look at Psalms 106.3. <clears throat> Psalms 1, 6, 3. Yeah. So it says, blessed are those who act justly, who always do what is right. Who always do what is right, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now let's, and let's go to 2 Corinthians, yeah, 10, 5. Let's see what that says. It says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Okay. I, I believe they're going to be asking us a question about these scriptures. So let's see what it says. It says, part of being a follower of Jesus is showing his love to everyone. Everyone. That even means our enemies. How hard is that, right? It says, especially the person who does not know him. Jesus has called us to share the good news with everyone, those close to home and those far away. We are to love our neighbor. There are no conditions to us loving others. Wow. It says we are to stand for what is right and love others, regardless of how they respond. God's message is a message of love. Okay, powerful. It means we got to love our enemies too, right? So it says, what are some ways we can show God's love to unbelievers? Well, it says... <laughs> We have to love everybody. Well, just because you're an unbeliever, I don't think it's hard to, try, you know, try to show God's love just because you don't believe what I believe. But, you know, you just have to be, you know, not too quick to judge others just because they don't believe. Because I believe maybe it's not the chosen time yet. I mean, I wasn't always saved. I don't know about you. I mean, I wasn't always saved. We don't know that when we're talking to someone just because they're unbelieving, they may be saved in, I don't know, a year from now. So, you know, we still got to speak kind words. Right. I mean, it, still yeah, and, and I think that we shouldn't let the the religion get in the way of uh, the friendship or just being, you know, cordial with one another. Mm -hmm. uh, we shouldn't let that get affect us. You should say, "Oh, you're you're Christian. Oh, you're Muslim. Okay, I can't talk to you. I, yeah, I exactly. work with you, but I I can't talk to you just because of that fact." Uh, I think his. I think it's kind of like silly to, to do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. So yeah, you can't let those kind of 
would you say boundaries get get in the way of that and then you, you also can't let it get in the way of your your witness to to them mm -hmm. uh, so you can do just little ways of uh, sharing your faith just being by being kind to them and, and showing the golden rule to, to them basically okay. preaching the gospel to them See, you preach the gospel okay so now it says how can you share how can you show respect to others who believe differently and also share share jesus i think we pretty much you know said you know it doesn't matter what religion you are kindness is kindness regardless um you know regardless who you are so yeah so you can still share share god's word even if you know they're unbelievers yeah, and it says, how do you show respect? Well, you know, respect has nothing to do with who you believe in. Yeah, getting to respect that person, you know, mm -hmm. just on how they are. And uh, I, I think also, you know, that person might, um, you know, respect your religion, just the fact that you have a religion, but then they might not agree with their religion, but they're, you know, the fact, they might respect that you're dedicated to, to the cause and just like they are, but it's totally different religion. You know, they can, they probably can just respect your dedication of it. So that's, that's, that's pretty much like my experience having, having someone that's, uh, that I know that's a different religion. Mm -hmm. You know, I kind of respect their religion, they respect mine, but okay. don't necessarily like agree with the same, um, the same principles of it but you know it's 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 like a mutual respect there so okay okay, okay. Right, let's go okay. to let's go up a little bit uh tuesday it says tuesday yep tuesday in romans chapter 12 and verse 18 is this reflecting yeah uh it says it is, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. As possible as it depends on you. So, so it, it's, it's a kind of uh, accountability there. Huh? That it depends on you. You got to, in your space, at, at school or at, at work, you have to live peaceably with, with that person. Mm -hmm. It might not, at, at the beginning, it might not be uh, pleasant or, you know, you might not agree with that that person, but mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's possible you have to, you know, live peaceably uh, with, with that person because with that being peaceably, you're, you're spreading the love of God and you're spreading his, uh, his, uh, his kindness to them. Uh, but it says as much as you have much as you can you know and sometimes it's like i said it might be it might be difficult but uh you know when you start off you gotta you know it might start off rocky or rough but uh you know at the end you it might be it might be pleasant to you you know you might win that person you know to the lord so and it says how the question is how should a christian young person respond to different religious beliefs in the world around us and many different religious uh, beliefs around us. So how do we respond to that? It says, do we simply agree to disagree? How can we show tolerance and respect for people who hold different beliefs and at the same time share Jesus with them? So how do we basically share, uh, respect that person, but also uh, share Jesus? So it's like, uh, you know, you agree, do you do, agree to disagree? Okay, I, I believe that Jesus was a good man. You believe Jesus was a good man, but he's not the savior. Okay, we agree to disagree. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it says, how can we show tolerance to respect the people who hold different beliefs? So it's basically you want to respect that person um like we were saying respect that person but you know you're not gonna 
all of that with that person believes, but you at the same time you got to do your what your mission is and what your purpose is to do. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you got to respect that person's religion. Absolutely. And think about it. We want people to listen to us, right? If we're trying to share God's word, we want them to listen to us. So there's nothing wrong with listening to um, what they have to say about their, their religion. We know for a fact that there's only one the true God. But yeah, there's a billion religions out there. The way people, right. um, you know, worship their you know, higher God, but, you know, it's just all about being respectful. It's okay to listen right. to listen to us so yeah yeah and then um like you were saying if you listen to them uh mm -hmm. then it, they might listen to you as well so yeah they saw that they saw that you had the time and uh to to listen to them so like okay yeah this is a, this is a brenda she listened to me you mm -hmm. know uh you know i might check out what, what she's talking about yeah, as yeah, well yeah. you know it might be some good points uh you know in her um in her religion that you know i might want to glean from you know you never know it's yeah. it might be a, it might be a person that's already like seeking and like okay i'm still seeking i'm still searching you know i have this religion right here but you know i still have some questions about that but uh but sister brenda was telling me about her so you know i might i might listen you know to what she's saying you know i might glean different things or you know Never know what the what the Lord is doing and the Holy Spirit's Holy Spirit's never working know. on never. each person's heart, you know. Yep. Okay. So, yeah. That's true. And we were okay. We we're in the next question, right? Okay. So it says, as agents, as what agents of God's kingdom in the world. So basically, agents, just like a federal agents. Agents have a mission. So, in other words, our mission in the world, uh, how do we live in society without offending people, turning them off or being disrespectful? We have a, a line or a fine line to walk. Jesus calls us to be fearless and bold in standing for him. Yet, to always treat others the way we would want to be treated. That means re respecting other people's right to build their beliefs just as we want our own rights to be respected. And um, so I like the part it says that we are agents uh, okay, for God's kingdom. So it, that's basically like the disciples were uh, his 12 disciples. And he had other disciples too. He had the 70. And what did he do? He sent them out into, into the world and what it's to, to share the, share the gospel. Share the gospel. And uh, so uh, they came back. They were they were they clean, cleansing uh devils and uh, casting out the dead or the sick. Yes. Uh, so we're basically in this modern day, we're his uh, agents. So we have a, a mission. It's not a secret mission, but it's a mission. Exactly. And, mm -hmm. and to go out to the kingdom society. And it says to, but we, he, wanna, he wants us to be bold and, and to be also fearless. And, but we also want to respect that person and uh, that reminds me of uh, uh, the scripture, actually, when he was sending out the disciples it, in Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. And it says that uh, he wants us to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So you, when you think about it, the, the serpent, what is, what is he? he he's, he's basically wise. You know, he, he's thinking to, uh, to be basically the, in different texts, he's like, a, trying to be wise and he uses his mind how to decipher different things, but mostly in, in kind of bad things like to, to deceive. But he wants, but Jesus in this context wants us to be wise in different situations. And he wants us to be wise as serpents and, and to be what else? Harmless as doves. So the doves are, they're harmless, right? You're not gonna be afraid of a dove. Uh, 
but he wants us to be harmless as as well but kind of blend it you know be mm -hmm. wise be wise over here and then be also harmless so i think that's kind of significant he wants to be fearless and also bold and it says bold and standing for him and treat others the way that we want to be treated basically the golden rule uh, that he wants us to follow and at the bottom it says the question is what we do or say may may seem to us for a little moment when when could our eyes be open we should see that upon it depend the most important results for good or for evil so basically saying that what we do or say may seem to us little it may seem to us little at the moment i might say something to you you know it might seem little i might mm -hmm. give you like a word of encouragement and you know it, it might not seem big to me but you know you, you might take that and um well they say run with it you know it may change your whole atmosphere of, of life i might say god loves you or i might say god has a purpose for you john you know jeremiah 31 11 and you know it might not mean anything you know to me when i said it mm -hmm. or it might mean something to me when i said it but you, just for that moment i might think okay today i said it but you might take it you know and take it on for years. You're like, I remember what David said to me or vice versa. You know, I remember what Sister Brenda said to me, you know, and that encouraged me and that, and that kept me yeah. going. So um, exactly. we, we need to do uh, little things like that just to encourage, uh, you know, people around us, you know, because you never know who's watching or listening in. And uh, you might be that uh, the person that, that helps you and uplifts you into uh, just to walk in the right way to for the lord so okay so those who are watching you know you can whatever you say you know you have to be careful but you have to strengthen uh that yeah. person so okay yeah. absolutely yeah let's go to what's the next lesson here all right so we on thursday yeah thursday so what does Thursday say? Connecting. Okay, so let's see what Matthew 22, 37, 39 says. It says, Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first greatest commandment. And the second is like, and the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. Okay. Right. Go to rule. <laughs> I know, huh? That's true. Okay, so it says in the world that says that there are many different truths for different people. Can you believe in the truth anymore? Seven day Adventist Christians say yes. But in a world which in a world with more diversity, more different views and opinions than ever before, we have to think carefully about how we share the truth. Okay. It says, well, you know what, speaking of that, where it says we have to think carefully about how we share the truth. If you notice, people are so sensitive to just everything. I mean, you can't say anything about somebody being offended. Okay, so it says, while we have to stand firm on what we believe, we also have to respect and love others whose beliefs are different. In fact, love is the key here. Bible doctrines have their place, but the best way to share Jesus with our world is to live his love in everything we do. It says, when people see our love in action, they'll be ready to hear our message of God's love. When those who profess the name of Christ, when those who profess the name of Christ shall practice the principles of the golden rule, <laughs> the same power will attain in the gospel as the, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, say that word, as politic, sorry, apostolic, apostolic times. Okay, it says there's what other possible ways you can speak about God's truth? Um, well, for one thing, I think there's no getting around it. What about nature itself? How did the moon, the stars, I mean, how did that get there? 
You know, man didn't put it there, so there is no way. I don't know what man explains how it got there, but I know man had nothing to do with it. So nature's big bang. Uh, oh yeah, the big bang. Yeah, that way. <laughs> that's how they explain. That's, that's one of the things. I mean, and I know there are lots of things. Um, even birth itself. How do how creation? How does how do me and you get here? It had to start somehow. So yeah. So there, there's different ways we can speak of God's truth. And there's no getting around. There's no way we can say that man had anything to do with it, right? Right. I mean, it's all about God. But yeah. So we have to stand firm and believe what it is that we believe. But at the same time, we still have to respect the belief of the belief of others at the same time. Right. We can do all that, like I said earlier, through God's love. Practicing God's love. Yeah. How to do it. Yep. Yeah. And, and um, I... I just want to comment on the last part right here. So, uh, so basically, so it says, I'm going to read it again. It says, when, when those who profess the name of Christ shall practice the principles of the golden rule, the same power, the same power <laughs> will attend the gospel as the apostolic time. So, Basically, yeah, I, I thought that one, one was kind of interesting, it, you know, do unto others as you want them to do to you. And um, so you basically have that, the same power with uh, Peter, mm -hmm. the same power with uh, with Paul. So it's, God, it's the same God anyway. So the same God. I, I thought that was, I thought that was kind of interesting. It's like, you know, you have that same power you know, there, there's people that they wish they were in Bible times, or they, they, uh, there's people that idolize the Apostle Paul. There's people that idolize the mm -hmm. Peter. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, so if you do the, the Golden Rule, you basically have the, that same power because there's, there's only one God who's empowering them. You know, the, there's not the power that they have within themselves. So you know, you have that same God that's that's with you. And um, if you're doing the same things, the same principles um, that he, he basically uh, gave to gave to them and he also gave to us. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was kind of interesting that, okay. you know, we could, you know, use that same same kindness when we go to school, that, that same golden rule when we go to, to work, you know, it's, you know, you have to do little by little, uh, you know, practice it. So you can have that same power. Exactly. Okay. Hmm. All right. So I think that ends our lesson for today. Okay. All right. So we're going to close out in prayer. You're going to close us out in prayer. All right, let's pray. Right. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for uh, your Bible principles and your Holy Spirit that's, that's moving in our hearts and our minds. And um, we thank you that uh, we can have that same power that you gave to the apostles, the same power that um, was in them can also be in us as we, as we live um, of your word out in, in this world. Thank you for uh, being with us. Thank you for hearing our prayers, be it those who are watching and listening. Uh, and we pray that it will be to your name's honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And before we leave, we're going to talk about Jeremiah 29 11. We're going to be on this for a while because this is so important. I want to read another version of it. It says, I want to do many good things for you, the Lord says. I want you to become rich and strong. I do not want to hurt you. I want you to believe that you will have a good future. This is something that the Lord is saying to us. And I want to, you know, as you young people listen to this, God has a plan. And I'm telling you, if we just follow it, this is a beautiful promise. This promise is true because God spoke it to us, to you. So just remember Jeremiah 29, 11, practice it. In Jesus' name, amen, right? Okay, amen. and so now we will see you. And may God continue to be with you all week long.
Amen. Until we meet again, amen.